If you live in a purple state, basically a state where either side needs to play pretty much to the middle to get elected statewide, then this guy might not be your first choice for a statewide candidate. Uh, this is Ken Cuccinelli of Virginia. He has spent his term as Virginia's attorney general defending sodomy laws, trying to save the Virginia law against gay people having sex. He also used the power of his office to hound a Virginia professor who's a leading scientist on climate change. He has been moving heaven and earth in Virginia to try to close down the state's abortion clinics. One of his first acts as attorney general was to overtly advise state universities that they should not feel constrained by anti-discrimination laws. He wrote to them to assure them, just in case they wanted to, it would be okay with him if they wanted to fire a professor just for being gay. He wanted to let them know that would be all right. Oh, and he also tried to get the nice lady on Virginia's official Commonwealth seal to put some freaking clothes on. Can't we cover this lady up? For his next act, Ken Cuccinelli wants to be governor. He is running for governor in the election that is this year in Virginia. But because he is who he is, because his base of support is so far out there on the edge, Mr. Cuccinelli apparently decided this year that he could not secure the Republican nomination for governor in his state in the usual way. Virginia Republicans usually pick their nominees by holding a primary, where everybody across the state gets to vote. But what Ken Cuccinelli needed in order to get the Republican nomination was actually for just a few people to vote. The right few people. The very, very, very far right few people. And so Ken Cuccinelli used his wiles and his political muscle to change the rules. He got the Republican Party to agree that this year they would pick the nominee for governor, not by a statewide vote in a primary, but instead at a convention. Because conventions are where the ideological hardcores go for a pleasant weekend of tricorn hats and pledges to keep the federal government off your lawn. Ken Cuccinelli got that convention that he wanted. And last weekend at that convention, he got the nomination for governor in Virginia. Now, because the middle is where you win a general election in a purple state like Virginia, Ken Cuccinelli has sort of recently tried to stop himself from talking so much about non-heteronormative intercourse and the other things he has built his career on. He has tried to sound a little more jobs-ish and economy-ish and less of the old Ken Cuccinelli culture warrior the state has come to know so well. But fly in the ointment, which probably isn't illegal, it probably isn't legal in Virginia anymore either. Um, Ken Cuccinelli is not the only statewide candidate who Virginia Republicans picked at their convention last weekend. They also picked the rest of the slate that Ken Cuccinelli is going to run with. The Democrat Party has created an unholy alliance between certain so-called civil rights leaders and Planned Parenthood, which has killed unborn black babies by the tens of millions. Planned Parenthood has been far more lethal to black lives than the KKK ever was. Meet Bishop E.W. Jackson, Virginia Republicans' official nominee for lieutenant governor and therefore the running mate of Ken Cuccinelli. It's as though Virginia Republicans thought Ken Cuccinelli would find sprinting to the political middle too easy, so they attached Bishop Jackson to him to make it about 550, ta 550 tons harder. The military has been decimated by this lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender policy that has now been implemented. Their minds are perverted. They are, they're, they're frankly very sick people psychologically and mentally and emotionally, and they see everything through the lens of, of homosexuality. When they talk about love, they're not talking about love, they're talking about homosexual sex. Homosexuality is a horrible sin. It poisons culture, it destroys families, it destroys societies, uh, it brings the judgment of God uh, unlike any very few things that is we can think of. And that is just how Bishop Jackson, Bishop Jackson feels about the gay. Uh, the man Virginia Republicans picked for the state's second highest statewide office says that you should uh, email him if you want to know the names of the two devout Muslims who President Obama hired for Homeland Security. And he says Obama and his comrades are totalitarianists whose unholy alliance will destroy this country if we left them. And uh, pr President Obama is the first homosexual president based on his affinities. And um, he says in this one, the president has proclaimed June as lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender pride month. Well, that just makes me feel icky all over. Yuck, yuck. 
Virginia Republicans, welcome to the top of the ticket, as picked by Virginia Republicans. Your guy for governor is very out there, but is trying not to be. Your guy for lieutenant governor is very out there and does not care. Your guy for attorney general, well, that would be Mark Obenshane, a Virginia state senator who is noted for once fleeing the Senate chamber, running away to block the confirmation of a judge who is gay because he is a judge who is gay. Uh, he's also known for a 2009 bill that would have required women in Virginia to report a miscarriage to the police within 24 hours so they can investigate it. Yes, Virginia Republicans, you nominated that guy to be the top law, law enforcement official in the state. And, and he's supposed to be the one from the establishment. Virginia's Republican ticket is really quite a spectacle. Uh, former Republican Party chairman Michael Steele says of them, quote, the Republicans I'm talking to are saying, what the hell are they doing down in Virginia? Is this 101 ways to lose an election? Still, though, Virginia's new Republican nominees have been out touring the state doing their best. Ken Cuccinelli uh, was not Republican Governor Bob McDonnell's first choice for a successor, but now that he's stuck with him as the nominee, Governor McDonnell has been stumping for him just the same, fundraising and campaigning for Ken Cuccinelli. Meanwhile, Attorney General Ken Cuccinelli has been doing this for Governor Bob McDonnell. Back in November, he quietly ordered a special investigator to probe whether Governor McDonnell broke Virginia law about reporting gifts. The headline gift in question was a chicken dinner, a $15,000 chicken dinner served at the wedding of the governor's daughter that was paid for by a campaign donor who makes a tobacco-based supplement of some kind and is himself under federal investigation. Mr. Cuccinelli, it turns out, also received gifts from that same donor and then did not report them and then years later finally did report them. FBI agents are also looking into the governor's gifts for any sign of a quid pro quo between the governor and this company. Oh, and also, the governor's former chef is facing embezzlement charges, and as part of his defense, he is demanding to know in open court what the governor's grown children were doing carting off flats of eggs and Gatorade and protein powder from the governor's mansion kitchen. But do not worry, Virginia. Governor McDonald says, has this headline that should be framed, says in the Washington Post, McDonald says he's still able to govern. And if you like the way he's governing, please vote for Ken Cuccinelli and for that guy with the gay Planned Parenthood KKK thing and for the other guy who wants you to report your last heavy period to the sheriff within 24 hours, just in case. Heading into the November election, Virginia Republicans may look like a slow motion disaster. But Virginia Republicans handpicked all these guys, right? Maybe they don't see these guys as a problem. Joining us now is Mark Seagraves. He's a longtime host of Virginia's Ask the Governor program on WTOP Radio. He's now a reporter for the NBC affiliate in Washington, D.C. Mr. Seagraves, thank you very much for being with us. I appreciate your time. Rachel, thanks for having me back. So, so how, how are mainstream Virginia Republicans reacting uh, to this ticket that got picked at their convention. The papers all make it seem like they're panicking, but what's your, what's your take on it? Well, you know, we'll see. Right now, the polls have Terry McAuliffe with a slight lead over uh, Ken Cuccinelli in the, in the governor's race, but is within the margin of error. Uh, as you said, in the state, in the convention, you had just a few thousand uh, diehard Republican uh, activists uh, who put Cuccinelli and this slate together. Uh, thus avoiding a statewide election. So we really don't know how the, the, the full electorate of the state would have voted on Cuccinelli had he faced uh, Bill Bowling in, in an open election, who is the current lieutenant governor and who was going to run and was Bob McDonald's pick to, uh, to replace him. Uh, but in the past, I mean, we can look at 2008 when this happened uh, before. This was when Congressman Tom Davis wanted to run for the Senate, and he was facing former Governor Jim Gilmore in what would have been a primary. Uh, the conservative party went for a convention in that instance because they didn't want Tom Davis. They put Jim Gilmore in. Tom Davis famously said uh, his party gave him the middle finger in that, and Gilmore went on to lose to Warner, uh, I think it was 65 to 35 percent. So that's what happened the last time uh, we were in this situation in Virginia. In, in terms of the, the choice of this lieutenant governor candidate, the guy who, uh, he, he calls President Obama gay, he says President Obama is, is uh, a Muslim, he says he is a totalitarian, he's very, very virulently um, anti-gay, often using very florid language when he talks about both abortion issues and gay rights issues. Um, is that the kind of candidacy that is conceivably viable in a statewide election, 
um, in Virginia for any office. And if it isn't, is that going to hurt Cuccinelli? Well, you've got two good questions there. And the answer to the first one is, yeah, he's a, he's a viable candidate. We'll see who uh, the Democrats put up. They have their primary in June, and there are two candidates running there. Uh, who don't have the statewide name recognition. You know, say what you want about good publicity, bad publicity. The fact is, a lot of people across the state are hearing about Bishop Jackson, and they're hearing his name, and they're seeing him out in public and whatnot, and getting this head start on the Democrats. Now, there are people who think that he is so far to the right that he will make uh, Ken Cuccinelli look a little bit more moderate. Cuccinelli has already said he's not going to spend this campaign defending uh, his fellow slate members, the other candidates' records. Uh, but the other day in Fairfax, uh, we asked him about this on Sunday, and uh, you know he he didn't back away from the uh, socially conservative statements Cuccinelli that he has made in the past. And that's what Democrats are going to try to do. They're going to try to remind people of the things that Cuccinelli has said in the past that are very similar uh, to what Bishop Jackson. Uh, is saying right now. I mean, when I have talked to people on the Democratic side about the Democratic approach toward this election in Virginia, they seem very clear that they want to run against Ken Cuccinelli, the crusading anti-abortion, super anti-abortion, super anti-gay culture warrior guy, the guy who wanted to cover up the statue on the Virginia state seal and all the rest of it as this real throwback social conservative guy. It seems like this slate would help them make that case more than anything else that's happened. Do you think Virginia Democrats are right to see this as an opportunity, or do you think they're, uh, they're sort of resting on their laurels here? Oh, no, it's absolutely an opportunity. And as you said in your lead up to this, you know, you look back at, you know, President Obama and now Senator Tim Kaine, uh, who both won the last election in Virginia. Uh, you know, this is the same Virginia that uh, elected President Obama the first time and then elected Bob McDonald governor. So Virginia, you know, they go the way that they want to go. And, you know, Northern Virginia is going to play a big role in this. For Northern Virginia, the further north in, you go in Virginia, the more liberal and more moderate it gets. And so this is going to be a, a huge factor. And, and the Democrats, you know, they, they believe this is a good strategy. You know, the Republicans, and particularly Cuccinelli, he wants to talk about taxes. He's going to want to talk about the economy. And he's going to talk about the fact that he has devoted his career to public service for the past 10 years or more, whereas Terry McAuliffe, you know, has been seen as a businessman and a national fundraiser for President Clinton. Uh, but when he lost his last bid for, for a statewide race here, he, he lost in the primary, uh, People in Virginia hadn't seen much of him since then. You know, he, he, he went back into the private sector. Now he's back on the scene. He, he worked behind the scenes during the transportation negotiation and the budget in the, in the General Assembly. Uh, but, you know, the Republicans won't want to define the election about economics. The Democrats will want to define it about social issues. And it sounds like both of these guys want to define the election about being about the other guy, uh, which is always a good sign for covering it, at least, because it makes it the most fun. Oh, it gives uh, us plenty to do. Exactly. Absolutely. Mark Seagraves, uh, reporter for WRC-TV uh, in Washington, D.C. Mark, thank you so much for being with us. It's nice to see you again. Thanks, Rachel. Thanks. All right.